after the interim leader is announced today. What's next for this party? Well, that's a really good question. I th and I think for a political party at this stage, what's really important is that the voters are seeing a party that is united, that is going to move forward uh, as adults, as I, as I like to say. And, and if, uh, because if it's seen as just spatting, arguing, fighting, or whatever, um, you know, voters, they want to see a government in waiting, potentially, if that's the choice they want to make. Because the Premier is a very, very uh, successful campaigner. And, um, you know, so I don't think anybody can take the outcome of an election. Uh, uh, you know, as a given at this stage of the game, regardless of who they choose. The good news for the caucus, uh, I think they have some, some very strong candidates uh, to choose from. So we'll see what, uh, what, what color the smoke is when it goes up <laughs> at Queen's Park uh, from the caucus meeting this morning. There must be a lot of infighting going on behind the back doors. Well, there always is. It's a political mm -hmm. party, right? I mean, right. and, and uh, lots of different views. Oh, that's what political parties are all about. Mm -hmm. uh, so certainly there is. And I think uh, at the end of the day, I mean, it happens in the NDP, it happens in the Liberals. Uh, you know, we've seen a couple of articles about some of the internal campaign uh, frictions they're having. That's normal. But what is important that the impression that the public is getting is that there's a team, that there's a leader, that they know where they're going, and that there's you know reasonable consensus on that direction. So let's hope that uh, you know that they come out of that caucus room and are able to do that it makes it easier too I think for uh, for the Liberals and the NDP too right because they know who they're dealing with do you think voters would accept an interim leader when they go to the polls um, well, we'll see what the caucus suggests. I mean, my uh, uh, my personal opinion is that they choose an interim leader, and at the end of the day, if the voters say, the Ontario voters say they like this person, they want this person to be premier, then I think that person should be premier. Uh, is that democratic within the party, though, if only the caucus decides? I mean, a lot of people are calling for a full party vote. Yeah, they are, and I understand that, uh, absolutely. And in the normal course of events, I would say that is, is the way that, I mean, our party was the, you know, the Conservative Party was the first to go to that one member one vote and a lot of members in that party are very proud of that it is very grassroots based in the circumstances it's a challenge to do that and still be ready for an election in June uh, but I think that uh, getting elected like say the interim leader or whatever they want to call that person if they do get elected by the voters of Ontario that's a pretty strong mandate uh, and I think that gives that person legitimacy Caucus right now, I mean, I think that's important, is that candidates and caucus have the most skin in the game right now. They've put their names on a ballot or will be putting their names on a ballot somewhere. Uh, for candidates, they've put their life on hold, they've quit jobs, they've rearranged their affairs to run for office. So I think the candidates and caucus have the most at stake in this decision right now. And I gather, and I understand there was a telephone conference with uh, candidates last night to sort of get some of their views. So we'll see. I mean, there's diverse opinion on that and I know uh, you know my my candidate and my uh, uh, candidate for MPP in my riding is, is calling for a convention or a, a vote the other thing is that the party constitution as I understand it um, uh, does allow for like if you lose an election I think it's an automatic leadership review you know it would be written potentially so that you know so there will be an opportunity for the grassroots to uh, to give an opinion after after a campaign under that scenario too but we'll see if there's one thing about this game as I think we all know in politics is you never know for sure you never know from minute to minute from right minute to minute some days unfortunately does the party have some soul searching to do about how it selects its leaders and the choices that it's been making it's, it's a good question. Um, one member, one vote is supposed to give a broad, diverse base of people because Ontario is a very broad, diverse, diverse society. So you want a party that reflects that. And I think what you've seen, uh, you know, with with a base of 200,000 members, uh, a lot of uh, strong work has been done on that case. Um, so we'll see if. Uh, but if you look back at the last few leaders, mm. you know, th the elections have been lost when they sh should and could have been won. Well, there are those that would certainly make that argument, you know, mm -hmm. but on the other hand, anybody who assumes that Premier Wynn uh, is, a, you know, some sort of pushover. I mean, she's not. I mean, she's very talented. She's very committed. Uh, you know, she's experienced now. She's gone through a campaign. Um, she's a tough campaigner. Um, you know, in this game, you have to go for the jugular from time to time, and she certainly shows that uh, has shown she can do that. So, um, I think that the voters uh, in the party need to be conscious of the fact that they are choosing someone not just to be leader of that party, but to be leader of a party that can present could be a government because at the 
end of the day, you have to have the capability to represent more than the people who joined your party, frankly, more than the people who actually just voted for you too, right? You're there to run a province for a pretty diverse set of interests. Could this turmoil be a blessing in disguise? I mean, Patrick Brown was not known to connect with voters. Female voters did not like him. Could the next leader potentially reach voters and on the same platform do better than maybe Patrick Brown could have done? Well, I guess we'll see. Uh, if uh, if that, that's the hope, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, listen. If if it's Premier Win uh, after uh, you know on June the eighth, then uh, all of the Tories will argue they didn't do a good job. If you certainly in the media will make that case, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Uh, if there's a Premier, whoever it is, uh, from the Tory caucus, then it was a great successful strategy. What can be learned from this so far? Well, I think actually. One of the things that, I, and I don't know what the answer is, but there's got to be a better process uh, for dealing with these kinds of issues than what we've seen. Um, you know, I mean, it's very difficult for women who bring forward allegations, absolutely, and I, I you know, I'm very pleased to see that most of the commentators I, I'm seeing are, you know, are recognizing that, but at the same time, um, you know, in a democratic society, due process of varying kinds, but due process is important. And it doesn't mean that, that one side's better or the other or wrong or whatever, but you, you need to have some kind of process. And I think in this circumstance, uh, I think it was right that you step aside, whether you're a political leader or a business leader, when you're dealing with an issue uh, where of whatever controversy of this nature, um, you can't focus on your job. Uh, and focus on your own, you know, sort of uh, survival, if I can call it that, when you're still there. Like, you just can't do both. And so stepping aside is not fair sometimes. I mean, I had cabinet colleagues when I was in government that um, stepped aside in some cases over incredibly, in retrospect, small issues, but it was an important principle. Premier Harris was very strong on that. I know in one particular issue, there was an issue when I was a minister that could have blown up. It didn't, but one of the things I had was a letter of resignation, uh, you know, ready to go if uh, if we couldn't fix it, if the opposition had wanted to make an issue of it, and they didn't. Um, uh, you know, so sometimes there is charity in this game. Uh, but no, I, I would have had to resign as, as cabinet minister. So it's not fair sometimes, but it's, uh, it's sometimes needed. Needed. That being said, there, there needs to be a way to deal with these issues because you have a young man who, rightly or wrongly, I mean, his career is over, his life has been shattered. Um, you know, this may well have happened to the two women. I don't know them, so I can't, I, you know, I can't judge, but I do know it can be very traumatic for women in situations like that. There's got to be a way to sort of sort this out somehow. You mentioned due process. Mm -hmm. Did his own party, did Patrick Brown's own party give him due process? Well, you and I don't know all of the conversations that happened, uh, you know, in the offices, and I don't want to second guess uh, his call, uh, his team's call. I think, uh, you know, it's a very high pressure uh, situation, and I think they made the calls that they thought at the time were the right ones, and I guess time will tell. Um, so I'm not going to second guess them on this because there was. It's very difficult to say what it, what should have been the right answer. If he'd stayed, it would have been a media circus for God knows how long. Um, you know, so any way you want to argue it, it would have been very controversial.